in order to get these numbers here that seem to be pretty close to these numbers over here, I found the simplest form was you take the geometric mean. You finally flip. Alrighty then. Let's do a real quick video on an explanation for the vacuum energy. I know I've been kind of putting a little bit of stuff out there, some images here and there, but I thought it was uh, probably better if I actually write everything out beforehand rather than struggling through with my terrible handwriting. Okay, so what is the vacuum energy? Note, we are excluding the, the division by meters cubed strictly for aesthetics. You can just plug in for each term because we're actually calculating ultimately for the vacuum energy density. I'm just omitting it just because it makes it nice, short, and pretty. That's why over on this side, rather than PVAC, basically the pressure of the vacuum, we're doing EVAC, or the energy of the vacuum. And, and then you divide it by meters cubed. Okay, to get your volumetric pressure term. And note, these are the estimated values based on the 2015 Planck collaboration, aka these are the numbers you're going to find on Wikipedia there. Because what it ends up being is they take the survey, they input into a calculation, and this is approximately what they get. I found other things with some more digits and everything. I didn't bookmark it. If anybody has more accurate, up-to-date uh, estimates for the vacuum energy, please send them my way. Okay. So this all came about because Thad, John Williamson, and Rick DeWitt have all stressed to me looking at things inversely or upside down makes a difference. So when you go on Wolfram Alpha, and I'll put the thingy up here, if you do one over the Planck energy, you get conspicuously close to the vacuum energy density, except it's reciprocal because it's an inverse. Now, to get it to the actual amount, you happen to have a pi divided by three term. So basically, I've expressed this in a number of different ways, but the cleanest way I found to express it is something like this. Because thanks to Wolfram Alpha, after doing some calculations, I found something that was, it seemed to be close to about one joule second. And as we've conjectured via the PB and J conjecture, the Planck boson and Joule conjecture, is that if you take the Planck mass, you divide it by the Higgs mass, you square that whole thing, you multiply it by H bar, the claim is it should be one Joule second. So I was trying to verify from a different angle, I failed. I put the Higgs boson in there, and maybe it is right, maybe it's better, but at that point, it's coming in at almost 126 GeV, which does not match our current measurements. Okay, so using that intuition, I'm like, all right, the relativistic mass of one joule, or basically, you take one joule, you divide it by C squared, and you're going to get out a mass equivalent. Cool. So... I'm like, what if it was equal to one? What number would we get out? So I played around with it, and ultimately, in order to get these numbers here that seem to be pretty close to these numbers over here, I found the simplest form was you take the geometric mean. So basically, you're taking three Planck masses in this kilograms output, you multiply it, by x, so we're going to solve for x kilograms, and the whole thing's divided by pi. That in this formation gets us 5.9566 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms. What do we got listed for the approximate estimate measurement? Uh, 5.96 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms. Again, I've omitted the division by meters cubed for aesthetics. Um, kind of close, a little bit below that. All right, how about one joule? One joule itself. So we do the same thing, except we express the Planck mass and its energy equivalents. And then we're solving for joules. So we solve for x joules, divide by pi in that geometric number. 
And we get this. 5.354 times 10 to the negative 10 joules. What do we got listed for our estimated measurement? 5.3566 times 10 to the negative 10 joules. All right, again, a little bit below that. All right, how about GEV? Why? Because we can apparently use electron volts to express anything. Like seriously, like lengths, masses, and everything. The unreasonable effect of this electron volts, I claim. But we take one joule, you can literally write it in Wolfram Alpha like this. One joule in GEV. Then you take the geometric mean or the square root of these two numbers. Three Planck energies times X in GEV. Again, divide by pi within our root. We get 3.341 GEV. What's our estimated number here? 3.35 GeV. Seems to be in the ballpark. About three-ish significant digits. And again, that's why we're going to need a lot better measurements. And that's why it's exciting. Because we're entering new ages of cosmology. We're going to be mapping so much of the sky. Having much more precise instruments in which we can help get more significant digits. Increase our confidence. Maybe, maybe there's nothing to this. Maybe there's absolutely nothing. I'm very biased. I think there might be something to it. Again, very biased, but there is a simplicity to this. These are expressed in geometric numbers, and you get pi in there. I think Dr. Hassenfelder at one point was talking about the vacuum energy and was saying, well, it effectively just ends up being like the curvature of space-time. For one thing, many physicists argue that the vacuum has an energy density and pressure and associate this with the cosmological constant. As I explained in this earlier video, I think this doesn't make sense. The cosmological constant is just a constant of nature which determines the curvature of empty space. Empty space just isn't necessarily flat. Talking about the curvature of empty space as if it was energy density and pressure is just a weird interpretation of geometry. But uh, I'm like, oh, that's interesting. Might there be something in here related to curvature? Okay. So that's all I really got for the calculations here. I would go in deeper, but now we're kind of getting into more uncharted territory. I mean, these are just calculations. You can put them in a calculator, you can put them in Maple, put them on Wolfram Alpha, Mathematica, whatever you want. I think there might be something here. And again, why? Oh, one joule. Well, if we have a coherent system of units and we're going to keep on refining them to make them more and more accurate as we figure out what's going on. And we're setting all these Planck values to equivalent ones in the respective dimension. I don't know. I think it might be a useful thing to look into further. Cool.